in this video I want to demonstrate the absolute minimum uh, superheterodyne radio made with two transistors and uh, it works in the medium wave band. I hope to make another demo circuit uh, for shortwave radio but perhaps in the future. This is the radio on the breadboard made on wood with brass nails the way I always work. This is the EF uh, transformer here. You see the diode from the detector. It's an 0A81 from Philips. This is the classic way to make a detector here. You can see it here with a um, capacitor and a resistor. Here is the EF uh, transformer. And the first transistor in this circuit has a lot of functions. This is the second stage. Here is the output. This transistor has a few functions. It's a local oscillator, so it gives frequencies between, let's say, 600 kilohertz and 2 megahertz. The second function is that it amplifies the signal from the antenna here, goes to the base. The third function is that it is a mixer. It um, generates a frequency difference between the radio signal that's entering here, the antenna, and the tank circuit. So there are three, function, three functions and we call such a circuit a self-oscillating mixer. In the preceding video you've seen how this uh, local oscillator was made. So now in fact we do no special things. We add the radio signal here. We set the whole circuit to oscillate. We generate frequency difference from 455 kilohertz at the collector here and that is here um, rectified. The AM signal is taken out by the diode, the radio signal yeah. and here is the final amplifying stage. One transistor amplifies approximately 100 times or so. It only works for strong local radio stations and the flaw from this circuit is that you don't have you don't only have a radio but you also have a transmitter at the same time because this is the oscillator coil where the radio signal enters but the oscillator coil is connected to a 10 meter free uh, wire outside so you are also transmitting perhaps it's uh, 1 milliwatt or 2 milliwatt or so I don't know but uh, I know that in that it is in fact it is forbidden by some uh, local radio uh, laws etc to make a transmitter. But okay, this is a demonstration circuit for people interested in the radio, and uh, I want to show it now. Put on the put on the loudspeaker volume up, and here's the tuning capacitor. This is the uh, detected signal. It's a Dutch uh, Dutch radio station. Now I'm going to tune in to another radio station. This is, this is a religious uh, radio station, Radio Maria in the Netherlands. Very strong radio signal, local signal. 
on the medium waves AM modulated. And this is also an ideal circuit to show the flaws from such a simple radio concept. And I want to try to demonstrate it with one hand, because I have to hold the camera also. Uh, the coil here in the beginning from the radio is in fact where uh, a lot of quality is generated. This coil is not an ideal AM coil. Uh, I wound it myself, but not ide ideal for uh, AM frequencies between 600 kHz and 2 MHz. Here you see coils that are specially designed for these, this frequency band. And they all are all made with so-called Litzer wire. It consists of approximately 30 or uh, fairly thin wires wound together. Each wire is isolated and that gives the coil a very high quality factor. And this is a coil specially made for lower frequencies than the medium wave band. Let's say long wave, uh, 100 kilohertz or so, or 150 kilohertz. And this is also such a coil, also made from Litzer wire. And these coils look like they are braided. That's done to spread the capacitance over the coil. And uh, of course, uh, a coil on such a low frequency needs a lot of turns. So to make it compact, uh, they choose this way to make the coil. And when you want to make a coil for this low frequency in a conventional way, uh, perhaps it's as thick as this roll, as this uh, flask. So big does this coil when you want to is this coil when you want to make a high Q coil for long wave. They are, they are all from commercial radios. And um, what happens, what can happen to this circuit is that when the the that there is here because the coil is not ideal, it's only a very small part where it works. So I take the ferrite rod out now. So now your radio station is gone. So this is very critical. In fact, it's too critical. So it's not not good. In fact, um, the second thing is that when I move the rod completely into the coil, the radio can start to oscillate suddenly, and you will hear that. You will hear nothing, or you will hear a sort of beep. And another flaw is that. When I connect the antenna to another uh, tap on the coil, um, you can hear these strange oscillations. Here the radio signal comes back, but in fact the, the whole antenna, the 10 meter wire that's connected to this small ferrite antenna, brings the frequency from the coil also down. It acts as an unknown coil hanging on the tuning coil or an unknown capacitance hanging on the tuning coil. So not an ideal situation. Uh, you can avoid this problem by uh, connecting a small capacitor from 14 picofarad or 8 picofarad um, in the antenna lead. Then the whole uh, antenna gets loosely coupled with the tuning coil. I do that here. Um, I hope I want to get the whole circuit to oscillate. Now, you will now it will not succeed, I think. But when you make this circuit, you will find that you, uh, when you do uh, all kinds of experiments with the coil. You will find a lot of unexpected uh, radio phenomenon, uh, beeping, oscillating, etc., etc. But there is a certain point here where the whole circuit works fine. And when you make a good coil, especially for uh, AM, uh, this will be no problem. You can tune in to all radio stations. And um, it can work fine. This is, by the way, 
very popular coil for AM medium waves. It's the 402 N coil made in the Netherlands in the past in the 60s by AMRO. Very good coil, specially designed and also usable as an EF coil with uh, some capacitors.